I do want to change gears on this conversation. I recognize that this is kind of a thinking outside of the box mentality, but we got a call we were talking about, and I can't remember how we started it, but we were talking about reincarnation. And we were saying, I wonder, you know, does anybody actually have this conversation? And Brendan Culleton called in almost right away and said, Actually, Al, I've started a group, and we talk about this stuff all the time. And I did a little bit of digging, and he's with a group called Paradigm Shift. And you can visit ParadigmShiftCentral.com. It is now worldwide, with huge clubs worldwide. And it started as a little group of people who wanted to have a conversation here in London that didn't really know how to do that. I wanted to bring Brendan in so we could finish this conversation. How are you, man? I'm doing pretty great. Thanks for having me well, on. I, well, I appreciate you clearing some time because uh, this is something that you called in. I can't remember what topic we were talking about, but we, we talked about uh, uh, reincarnation. You called <clears> in. <throat> and I have to confess, let's start off first of all. I have to confess that when you first called, I thought, this guy, this guy sounds young, <laughs> very, very <laughs> young. And um, I, I, I was kind of blown away. I don't know how old a guy you are. Let's start off with that. Are you, are you a, an older soul with a younger voice or vice versa? <laughs> Uh, some people have referred to me as that, but yeah, I'm, I'm only 26 and okay. actually a fairly recent graduate of Fanshaw and Western for the uh, media theory and production. Okay, perfect. And, and then you called in, you kind of went heavy on us there a little bit. We, we were talking about reincarnation. You said, oh, no, no, me and my friends, we talk about this all the time. And uh, I got your number. We started talking a little bit. You started off something called the Paradigm Shift Central, which started off in London. And now it's, it's pretty much worldwide, isn't it? Or at mm -hmm. least uh, nationally here throughout Canada. Yeah, yeah, like the main website, <clears throat> excuse me, the main website itself is paradigmshiftcentral.com and the objective behind this project is the creation of uh, physical communities that have regular open-minded discussion and meditation circles, which we do in London and uh, we do those in London for anybody who's interested, they can come out to it every Friday, downtown yoga studio, 6.45 p.m., 236 Dundas Street, and uh, we have a Facebook page and stuff too, but the, uh, the whole idea was is that by creating the these uh, regular spaces, these spaces where people can come, they can practice listening, and they can practice talking about the things that we don't usually get a chance to talk about in regular public spheres. And uh, the whole project itself is really to be able to encourage open-mindedness, healthy living, and the evolution of consciousness, you could say. Well, and, and I love this idea because this is something that I think a lot of us, especially guys, and, and I have to say not, not to be totally gender specific here, but a lot of us guys sit there and we'll read something that'll tweak our interests about mm -hmm. energy or open-mindedness or acceptance or love even. And we tend to turn to saying, ah, who do I talk to about this? That's really kind of where you guys fill in the niche there, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Like when I started this project, there, I, I was always a really curious kid growing up, and uh, similar to like what you said, there weren't too many people who I could talk to about this. I was doing a lot of research on the internet. Even growing up, listening to Coast to Coast was a big influence for me. So I mean, nice. just naturally being interested in sort of the uh, fringe aspect of research, whether it be about alien Sasquatch or even about just how much our thoughts create reality, or meditation, or even the quantum or lucid dreaming. All these are any of these topics are topics that come up but yeah you're right like having this space is a really interesting place because not only does it allow people to be able to connect with others in their community but it gives them a sense of hope knowing that they are not alone and uh, we've been having these meetings for about five years now and uh, through that like my core group of friends I have met through this and it's all wonderful people and even though you mentioned that uh, oftentimes it is like kind of like a male thing to sort of start looking further down the rabbit hole so to speak uh, the community itself is is very 50-50 male and female, and in wow. all ages as well. We have younger people, and we have people, you know, in their 50s and 60s who are equally as interested in this stuff because they were the ones who were doing a lot of this research back in, like, the 70s and 80s as well. It's, been, right. it's, it's timeless in itself, right? Brendan Cullen joining us, and he is with Paradigm Shift, uh, uh, Paradigm Shift here in London, which started off here in London, has now gone worldwide. ParadigmShiftCentral.com is the uh, the website, and you can jump onto his radio show there, Paradigm Shift Radio, and uh, uh, links on that website as well to mm -hmm. uh, all, all of your features on YouTube and uh, and uh, lots of great information. D bring me back to this meeting here, okay? So let's say all of a sudden I, I sit there and, and I'm, I'm reading an interesting story on, on reincarnation or lucid dreaming or anything. Mm -hmm. How do the conversations get brought up what does a meeting actually look like well the meeting itself it's inside the yoga studio like i said so it's very casual and we literally just sit in a circle and it's kind of almost going back to uh, the tribal way of things in the sense that we sort of have like a talking stick but it's more just you know like a, an imaginary talking stick and 
and we just take turns sort of sharing our ideas. And uh, as the person who's usually facilitating it, I just sort of say, you know, like, okay, this person next, or we just sort of do it as a collective hive mind within the group. But yeah, it's really just sort of this idea that we don't even entirely know where each conversation is going to go. And it's really exciting. And it's really interesting in that way, because I emphasize that the whole purpose of a group like this is to bring it back to practice. It's being able to practice talking about these things. And we encourage people that when they do come to a meeting, that they be able to continue the conversation where they are. So whether these people are continuing the conversation in their schools, at home, in their workplace, with their other group of friends, but just sort of doing what they can to help sort of plant those seeds and to really spark people's interest. Because I think at a core level, all of us as humans are curious about how this reality works and more importantly, our place and our potential within it. What's the most mind-blowing thing that's, that's been brought up in a meeting? What's the one thing that you, know, you guys sat around and you, who's a pretty deep thinker, heard and you said, oh man... Oh, I got to go get a drink. Hold on here. <laughs> well, I mean, for me, this is one of the things that really uh, got me into this stuff to begin with, and I think it's a great introduction topic, is the topic of lucid dreaming. Because to me, uh, once you sort of connect the dots, this really ties in with the idea of how much our thoughts create reality. And uh, even the idea that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, even the idea that there is no spoon, quote unquote. And uh, the lucid dreaming topic, I mean, for those who aren't familiar, lucid dreaming refers to the idea of being aware that that you are dreaming in a dream. But once you're aware that you're dreaming, it's this idea that your thoughts literally create the dream space. So if you want to like create an apple in your hand, you can create an apple in your hand. If you want to teleport to the Egypt to Egypt and the pyramids there, you can do that. If you want to fly through the sky like Peter Pan or Superman, you can do that. And the thing that's interesting is that my my understanding of this is that the dream space is a uh, and I kind of mentioned this last time I was on the show, that's kind of closer to where we are actually from as a spiritual being, so to speak. And this, you know, ties with the idea a lot of people some people might have heard this idea that we are not human beings with us with a spirit we are spiritual beings having a human experience kind of thing and what i sort of entail that is is, is this idea that uh, it breaks down to this idea that this physical reality is a uh, quote-unquote an illusion and not to say that that doesn't make it less real but rather that it's this idea that everything is equally unreal and in the same way that our thoughts can create in our dream it's this idea that our thoughts are constantly constantly shaping Shaping the world around us. So it really just brings mindfulness back to what thoughts we are carrying with us and especially our attitude and our emotions that we're projecting towards other people. And I mean, this is something where the science side of it has gotten involved with it. And you may have heard this idea of uh, Dr. Emoto, who's done this experiments with water and the right, idea yeah. that if you have, um, <clears throat> if you have like water par particles, water molecules, and you project love at it, it creates this beautiful symmetrical crystal type shape. Shape. And if you project hate at it, it sort of breaks it apart. And uh, one thing that actually came up at a recent meeting that sort of like my own uh, sort of uh, really clicked with me is this idea that love in itself is like the default energy of the universe. And the universe is always sort of trying to bring itself back to this balance, this, this symmetry of love. And even when we see things that are sort of like out of shape and, and, and in a chaotic form, that in itself is still love, just in a different form. And from a higher perspective sort of thing, it really sort of ties in with this idea that uh, everything sort of happens as part of our higher growth. There's nothing thing in our life that is not there for us to be able to grow from, to be able to learn from, and to be able to evolve spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, etc. So yeah, the, again, going back to the, the as you think, so shall you become, that's really what it comes down to. So just encouraging people to be uh, to be responsible for, for what they are carrying through this life and, and what they're sharing with other people as well. Okay, okay. That's, how, that's how we change the world, you know? So. Uh, all right, Brendan, I've been, I've been pretty easy on you here, okay? I've given you the platform. Are, are you ready for me to be a little bit negative nelly absolutely yeah. because and, and i don't mean this as a negative uh, as a negative i want to i want to tear apart your ideas or anything like that i want to play the, the the other side of things and i want to be the guy the the guy that says you guys got doobies in your ears and alcohol in your veins we got to talk about this uh so i, I want to put you on hold here for just half a second and then uh can you hold on for about two minutes and when we come back I, i'll challenge you a little bit does that work out okay I'm looking forward to it. Okay, Brendan uh, Cullen, I'll just put you on hold here, and on the other side, we'll get a little bit challenging because I recognize the way that that mentality comes across as well. We'll get to this next on News Talk 1290. We're going, it, this is a weird way of, of thinking.
And, and I think that's the least uh, uh, that we can say about all of this. So we're going to be a little bit negative from here on in, if that's okay with you, Brendan. You know that there are people sitting there going, oh, good, a new age hippie, a 26-year-old yeah. <laughs> guy, what's he going to teach me about life? And, and that's a fair question, is usually, or at least the way that we've been brought up, is to say, wait a second, you're a 26-year-old, you don't know anything about life yet, what am I supposed to learn from you? <laughs> what do you say to that guy? Well, I mean, I think uh, a big part of like this whole paradigm shift thing is encouraging people to be able to listen. And uh, something like that where it says, like, oh, you know, you can't teach me anything, uh, some people would say that that in itself is like the ego. And uh, that in itself is like one of the conversations that often comes up. Like, why do we have this defensive nature? What is it that we are afraid of? And oftentimes it's this part of us that it, it, it tries to push things away to say, like, that's not me, like, that's something else. And it, it, it stems from this place of fear but in itself like that's something that over time and through practice and by allowing ourselves to be more open we can let go of that sense of fear and there's really i mean when you get down to it like fear is an illusion like fear is this uh there's an acronym for it it's the idea of false expectations appearing real <laughs> so i mean i would say to those people that you don't have to believe anything that i say and that's something that i repeat through the paradigm shift project all the time is the idea that we're not telling you what to think i mean we're, we're, we're not you know we're not like a dogmatic rich like club like you know cult thing type thing or whatever what but <laughs> the whole idea is that we encourage people to think for themselves because I mean what's most important is their understanding of reality not my understanding of reality but what is their understanding of reality how do they connect the dots how do they piece it together and then as consciousness like as a bunch of us all on this journey all of us are just sort of like piecing together parts of the puzzle and say like these are my experiences this is what I know and when we start doing that it creates this beautiful collage it's beautiful mandala and uh, it's something that again like anybody is invited to come out to like these meetings that we have in london like anybody anybody can come out to them and uh, yeah it's a great opportunity to meet other people and uh, if people have like some resistance then i encourage them to just sort of leave their expectations at the door and just experience it for themselves and then just see how it feels for them really Brendan Culleton joining us. Uh, he is the originator of Paradigm Shift. It started off here in London and is now worldwide, ParadigmShiftCentral.com. And uh, what is the what would be your overall expectation? Because, uh, again, the negative side of me looks and says, are you kidding me? I'm picturing six people in a yoga studio that uh, probably have the munchies and talking about enlightenment. And, and how is that supposed to get this huge shift going? Maybe give me the realism on that. What, what, what actually happens at these meetings and uh, uh, who all shows up and what's the overall expectation? Right. Well, the meetings have been evolving over time, and uh, as, as I mentioned, we've been doing them for literally about five years, and having them in a yoga studio is, is a nice uh, way to do it. It sort of brings like the sort of like zen calmness kind of quality to it. And uh, I, I will mention, we actually do still have uh, the meetings in Fanshawe College as well, which is where it originated from when I was a student there. But the meetings themselves, uh, they've been getting more popular, and uh, on a weekly basis, on every Friday, we have uh, close to about 20 and sometimes 30 people out at a time. So there's obviously a lot of interest, and the people who are there, they're, they're you know, they're just regular people, and they're really interested in learning about this stuff. And I mean, there's a lot to each meeting that makes it very unique. And every single meeting is always different, which is a kind of a really exciting thing about it, because even I can't fully predict what's going to happen. Like this whole paradigm shift project. I mean, the fact that there's communities all across the world now. We have about 50 communities all across the world. Uh, there is quite there's there's a, a good hand handful in Canada. Most of them are in the United States. And then we also have them. We have them in South Africa. We have them in Norway and Germany uh, and Switzerland, uh, like all over the place, literally, because this shift, this shift in consciousness, this idea that we are awakening, so to speak, we are awakening to our understanding of reality and our potential within it, so to speak, is a global thing. So, I mean, it is like something that like anybody anybody can get involved with and more people are getting involved with it and it's just continuing to accelerate. I mean, you may remember there was a, a lot of sort of commotion uh, back in the day about this whole like 2012 kind of thing. Right, yeah. And regardless of whether or not people sort of uh, felt that something happened, it did bring 
conversation to the surface. And that is like what this, this is about. As I said, this is a social experiment in the sense that what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to create space. I'm trying to create space to bring all this stuff together, to bring people together, to share these ideas, and then to see what happens, and then to continue to go from there, and to always be able to hold gratitude within every moment, and be able to say, like, this is awesome. Like, we, we are doing awesome things here. And the biggest thing that comes out of this is inspiration, I think. Collective inspiration and collective education at its core is really the goal of this Paradigm Shift project, and it's changing lives all across the world, so definitely. And, and, and uh, at the very least, for anybody that is listening and being that negative Nelly is, uh, at the very least, what can you say about a bunch of happy people, really? I mean, it's, <laughs> that's going to feed off. Uh, we, we've got to leave it there, uh, and it's just amazing you would say that, because I can remember in 2012, Mike Stubbs and I interviewing Daniel Pinchbeck, who was talking about how 2012 was going to oh, nice. usher in this, this new this new uh, 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 mentality, and I can remember very clearly thinking, this guy's off his rocker. But ever since then, you're right, at least it's brought out that conversation. Where do we uh, continue the conversation again? Where are the meetings being held? I'll, I'll let you remind people. Yeah, again, so the main website, paradigmshiftcentral.com, people can check out that. Uh, a lot of the conversation is online as well. So, I mean, I also host an online radio show so people can listen to it through their computers, and they can get those through the links. Uh, there's lots of videos there. We encourage people to submit their own videos. Uh, I mentioned I went to school for media, so uh, there's also three full-length movies that I did. The most recent one uh, was a transformational festival that I went out to in California, and I'm actually going back out there this April, not to, not to mention that as well. But the place where people can come to in London, London is every Friday, 6.45 p.m., downtown yoga studio, 236 Dundas Street, right across from the Central Library downtown, and it's on the third floor. And, again, anybody can come out to that. And uh, we usually the meetings go, like, sometimes, you know, like, we'll do a meditation at the end. So if people haven't experienced meditation, it's a good way to be able to experience it within a group. And uh, afterwards, we usually go out for shawarma together. And, uh, yeah, it's a really great community <laughs> event. So it's all about the shawarma. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you end that, my friend. Thank yeah, you yeah. so much for this. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much, Al. All right, Brendan Cullerton, he is uh, with Paradigm Shift. Like I said, it's, it's, I wanted to have that conversation because he brought up this, this great point. That group that is now worldwide started up because they said these are kind of taboo topics. When was the last time, Nick, if I said to you, come on, buddy, we're going to sit down in a circle and we're going to talk about love and we're going to talk about energy, we're going to talk well, about... Well, but you and I ability. would do that all the that's time. That's true. Right? Yeah, that's a bad example. But for, for the most part, we, you... It is a strange thing. It right. is one of those ones where after a few beers, you start going, maybe I can... I'll throw this in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> reaction, yeah. We're having a couple of beers. Calm down. Yeah, and, and I, just, I, I just kind of love that there is not just a group, but a young group of people. And, he, mm. uh, and it brought up that... Uh, I like the way that he brought it up, is he's saying, if nothing else, to start at least a, a basis for that conversation Absolutely. i think it's kind of uh, kind of a neat thing it's 357 we'll put a bow on the show get you set for london in the afternoon next on news talk 1290 cjbk